Alright, what's up everybody? Welcome back to another Pi Game Python programming tutorial. I think that was the first time ever I actually said that without stumbling over my words. Now, in this video we're going to kind of continue with our world editor that we built in the last tutorial. It was really simple, it was really, really easy. It didn't do much at all other than draw shapes, and we just kind of kept track of those coordinates. Now, if you notice, I'll go over back to the, the engine that we have here. We copied and pasted all of the, the platforms that we made into the level structure for level one, and there were, there were a few cases, or in fact, in this case, there were only one case, there was only one case, where we had a width that was negative. And that happens if we actually were to draw, uh, I'll show it to you, I'll show it to you, I'll bring open the play world editor here. In this case, if I drag my mouse and go diagonally right and down, that's all positive. If I were to drag my mouse and go to, uh, to the up direction and left, width is going to be negative. If I hit the enter button, if I drag this out here, you can see that, whoa, this is negative, and uh, whoa, that's negative too. We can't really have a negative width or height. So, in Pygame, this is called normalizing, and I'll show you how we can kind of manipulate that in here. And uh, the way that we're going to do that is actually by adding to draw in this to draw line. Once we create the rectangle, the Pygame.rect, if we were to run dot normalize, the Z, that immediately fixes everything uh, to that specific rectangle. So if I were to draw this right here, okay, nope, I'm an, I'm an idiot, sorry. What did I do? The heck did I do? The heck did I do? All right, all right, guys, I figured it out. Um, <laughs> the normalize function does this change. It it it, it switches and it kind of corrects the negative sizes. It, it switches the sides of the rectangle, and it does that to the actual rectangle object. It does not return any other object. It just does it to that object itself. So the way that we have to do this in our code is actually say, okay, let's bring this out of the to draw addition program uh, or, or line, and let's say that the rect is equal to this. And now let's run rect.normalize all we're doing is putting in a variable and then running that on the variable, and then we just add in the rectangle, that variable. So now when we run the code, let's see what happens here. If I run this, that works just fine. You can see it in the back. If I run this, hit enter, that works just fine as well. Okay, cool. So there's our rect. There's our normalize function. Now, let's say what if we wanted to use already the stuff that we already created? Because I'm kind of curious to see how this level will work. This is just honestly out of curiosity and just, just for play, but I want to show you guys how the normalize function works, or at least one way that I know how the normalize function could work. So I'm going to show you this over in the block object, right over here. Uh, we can expand or close out of the levels here, and let's open up the block. In the constructor, let's actually do a few tests. Let's uh, right after we uh, after we call all this before we start to make things with width and height. Let's test. Let's say if width is negative, that's when we know there's a problem, right? So if width is negative, let's flip the sides. Let's add width to x. Now x now sorry, width is negative, right? We just said if width is negative, then this will happen. And so if we're adding a negative number, we're essentially subtracting. So we subtract x, which is the position subtract the width, so the sides will stay there, the sides will stay at the same place, and let's see, what if we do this, what if we have to set width to equal the positive version of width, which is the absolute value of width. And of course, we can do the same thing for height here, that's, that's, that's super duper simple, right? If height is less than zero, then, well, y can of course equal plus width, sorry, plus height. And then we'll do the same thing, finding the absolute value of that value. Now when we run the code, that works just fine for us. The block is created A-OK, -okay, and boom! We've got our dude just hanging out in this world that we just made. And we, yeah, yeah we, got our, we got our scrollable camera that we made in the last one, the scrollable platformer. If I just jump on these platforms here, I can hang out, I can move around. I'll go down here, let's say, jump over here, walk down these stairs. <laughs> oh! Nifty! We got a cute little video game, right? I can jump on these platforms, I can jump on this here, and jump all the way down, and boom. 
Now, this world is very indefinite, right? Like, if I were to jump down here, whoa, I keep falling forever, because that's the way that it, it's, it's just programmed. Even when we've made this level with the world editor, it looks kind of constrained, like, in the dimensions of the program that we made. We can, of course, like, okay, what if we drew a big box? What if we made all this crap very dark, like, so we can't see the edges or anything? It's like we just made a world that's this tiny, like this right here in the center. And now I put right this right here, and maybe another block over here, kind of something coming from the wall. We can make whatever we want, and that works okay for us, but... Now we kind of have to know what are the coordinates and stuff. Where Where is the position? Well... What if we, we we need to be able to place the player in this in this in this world, right? We want the player to probably spawn right in here. Well, we don't really see how we can do all that. We we can get the coordinates right, but we're kind of taking a guess as to where the player is in that case. What if we kind of displayed the text? Hmm. I'm gonna leave that up to. What if we what if we had. What if we had a coordinate system? Not a coordinate system, but if we if we displayed where the mouse was, if we displayed the coordinates of the mouse every time we moved. So you, as the developer, you would know, okay, where is what in this world? <laughs> I don't know, that's, that's up to you. You can make that. I'll leave that as an option if you want to show off how you can do that, please do. It might be a good idea to make more of the game that you want, but that's one way to do it. So, okay. <laughs> I think I'm good. I think that's that's all I wanted to show off in this video. Just simple normalizing this function right here, how we can fix it, and how we can load that world, and the way that it works, or at least one way that it can work. Since we're going to use this normalize function from now on, we really didn't need to see this right here, so I'm going to remove that. And I'll just go back to the level that we used to have, or something. What if I have an empty level? I can't really have an empty level. I mean, I could, right? Let's see what happens. This is just me goofing off. It's the end of the tutorial. I can do whatever I want. Whoa! I've fallen for days. <laughs> there goes gravity. All right. Thanks for watching, everybody. I, I hope you're enjoying this. I hope you're enjoying the series. I, it's it's a lot of fun for me to make and, and, and all that. So I, I do enjoy it. Height can equal 16 or something. Let's have a brown... I added brown to the colors earlier, and now we got a little brown ground. <laughs> can jump around with that. Cool. So, yeah. Hope you're enjoying the series. If you, if you like all the stuff that I'm doing, if you have any questions, comments, something that you'd like to see done, just let me know. Subscribe, like the video, comment, get involved. Thanks, guys. Um, I'll see you in the next tutorial.